All right, guys, so hopefully a quick video for you here today. So we've got the Coinbase Advanced Trade Python API, the official SDK released by Coinbase. And basically the way that this is different than the Python wrapper that I released on the channel a few months ago is this is being actively maintained by Coinbase and they're not gonna have any fear and greed index stuff or any MVRV data or any weird extra stuff, any of that trading stuff that I've included in my version of the Python wrapper that I'll have linked down in the description. Instead, what this SDK is doing is it's giving us direct access to Coinbase's backend trading functions. And it's being updated and maintained in real time by Coinbase employees who are actively working on the development of this SDK and including more features as they get released on Coinbase Advanced Trade. So this is super exciting, really cool project for Coinbase to undertake. And I'll have links in the description to this SDK as well as Coinbase's developer Discord. That way you guys can get access to all the resources you might need to get started with your own projects. As for this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to get up and running using this Coinbase Advanced Trade SDK. I'll be showing you how to authenticate with Coinbase using this SDK, they've actually come out with a new authentication method. So it's different than the method that we covered back in the last video when we were authenticating to my Python wrapper. And then I'll also be writing some sample code just showing you how you can make a $10 buy of Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever cryptocurrency you might want to buy using this official SDK. So if we scroll down here and come to the readme, we'll see that the first installation step is to run pip3 install Coinbase advanced PY. And if you don't have Python running on your local machine, I've done videos in the past explaining how you can get Python running really quickly on your local machine. I'll have those links up in the cards and down in the description. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on copy here and then I'm just gonna open up a terminal. I'm gonna paste that command here in the terminal and go ahead and hit enter. And we'll see that I've already installed this Python SDK because I'm actually building on top of this SDK to maintain some of the functionality that was previously in my wrapper. And I'll have that released on the blog and here on the channel, hopefully within the next month. So next to authenticate this SDK with your Coinbase account, you can follow the instructions here in the readme or you can just go ahead and head over to Coinbase. And if you click on these nine dots up here in the top, Top right corner and scroll down you should see developer platform so this is the screen that you're going to see the first time you load coinbase developer platform if this is your first time using coinbase developer platform you probably don't already have a project so i'm going to go ahead and create a new project just to show you what that looks like you'll see that I literally just had to click that button and now I have a second project, right? So I had project one, now I have project two. And the first thing I'm gonna do here is obviously click on advanced trade. And so once I've clicked on advanced trade, it's gonna give me a link to the docs that I'll have open in the sidebar here. But then what I really wanna do is click over here onto API keys and then I can go ahead and create a new API key. So I'll give this API key a name. I'm just gonna call it YouTube demo for now. And then I'm gonna click on create and download. And so now I have an API key name and an API key secret. And to be clear, just like every other video on this channel, please do not share your API keys with anyone because if you do, they're going to be able to trade and do other things to your Coinbase account on your behalf. You should be treating these API keys as safely as possible. And if you are doing long-term development on your account, you should be saving these API keys as environment variables in your computer. I'm not gonna do that for the sake of this demo, but in the long term, that's one of the best practices to follow for how to handle these API keys because again, they are very important. So next, I'm gonna go ahead and copy these API keys into my programming editor of choice. I personally program in Cursor SH. It's a VS Code fork that's integrated chat GPT and other AI models to make it easier for us to learn how to program. And if you never use that software before, I have a video of how I use it and why I use it up in the cards and down in the description. Let's go ahead and copy these codes over into our IDE. Go ahead and make a new file here called Coinbase demo and I'll make a public key variable and I'll go ahead and copy the secret. And basically we're just gonna put them into Python strings here. You can also copy the key into something like a one password and store it for long periods of time, but I personally don't do that and I would probably just go regenerate a new API key if I ever lost the old one. So once you've created your API key here, the last thing you need to do on the screen is go ahead and click on configure. And then if we click on edit API key, we should see our API restrictions and you'll see that it's default. It was created with view only permissions. I might've missed this on a past screen, but you wanna go ahead and enable it for trades and transfers. If you want to enable it for transfers, I think that that's like an extra level of security that you might want to take a little bit more seriously. I'm going to, on this you know screen here, only enable it for trades. But if you did want to do uh, trades and transfers, I would actually recommend that you create two separate API keys, one for trades and one for transfers. Again, the transfer API key can be you know, relatively dangerous. That's a situation where if you're automating transfers, I've done that in the past and it can be a really good thing to do. But if someone steals your API keys there, like they're gonna be able to transfer your Bitcoin or your cryptocurrency to any other account. And that's obviously like, a, you know, a bigger security risk than them getting access to being able to trade on your behalf, which is still not something that you would want to have happen. But again, transferring is sort of a whole nother level of risk there. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this with just the trade permission. 
And this is actually a massive upgrade over what this screen used to look like. If I have a quick screenshot of that here, maybe I'll throw it up on the screen. When we used to configure these API keys on the Coinbase platform, they would have like 9 million permissions. You had to do one for every single wallet. This one is just view transfer trade. And it's very reminiscent of what used to exist back on Coinbase Pro. And so this is, you know, a major upgrade. And I'm very thankful that Coinbase has implemented this. And if we head back to the readme, Coinbase is saying basically the exact same thing, which is, you know, don't store your API secrets directly in your code unless you're doing testing, which is what we're doing right now. The best practice is to use a secrets manager and access the secrets that way. So kind of everything that we already talked about, just another best practices note on how to store your API keys, because again, they are very powerful and they are, you know, not to be shared with anyone else. So here we'll see the syntax. If we did go ahead and set up the API keys as environment variables, we're just passing nothing into the rest client. But for the rest of us that are just putting the keys directly into the code, which I think is a totally fine way to do for testing purposes and is what I've done here on the channel for a long time, you can go ahead and click on this version of the code and copy it. At the end of this video, I'll have down in the description all of the code that we used for this video. So if you don't want to follow through step by step, you can just take the final finished version and plug in your own API key and API secret into that version of the code and go ahead and get started testing, you know, on your own a little bit faster. But for everyone else, I did want to take the time to explain kind of what the differences are between all of these things that Coinbase has written in the readme. And so now these four lines of code are what is connecting this Python script that we're writing up to our Coinbase account that's associated with this really long string of these two API key and API secret. So this one is very specific to the project that I created for my Coinbase account. Yours is obviously going to be different than than what I've generated here. We'll also see here that it's possible to authenticate without the actual API key and API secret in the code base. We can actually just authenticate using this one line here and putting a path to this API cloud key.json file that we were given through Coinbase. I actually didn't cover that right when we had downloaded the API keys, but as soon as you go ahead and finalize the creation of your API keys, you'll see down here 10 minutes ago when I created the API keys, I can go ahead, it's called Coinbase API key.json. I can show this in Finder, and then I could just go ahead and drop this into my project. And you'll see that basically this JSON file that we've downloaded is exactly these two pieces of information, your API key and your API secret. And so Coinbase has handily given you, you know, an easy way to access that through that file if you don't want to actually just expose the plain text of your API keys in your Python file. There's also this other way that you can pass that file in and authenticate with Coinbase. Uh, and then you can also set timeouts here with your REST requests. So basically, if you send a request and you're not getting a response for five seconds here, then you could time out and just make sure that your computer is not like continuing to spin on some Coinbase request that was never fulfilled. I'm going to go ahead and skip that for now and just come down to this next section, which is using the REST client. And this is basically showing us how we can execute a market buy for Bitcoin. So I'll go ahead and copy this code here and we'll jump back into our Python script and go ahead and paste it down here below the rest of our code. Now that I've pasted the second piece of the code here, by default, it goes BTC USD. I'm actually using USDC in my Coinbase account because I want to get a little bit of interest while I store my US dollars there. And so you can modify this to whatever you want. If you're doing Ethereum, you could change this to ETHUSD or whatever it is. And it looks like right now we're quoting a dollar of BTC USD. So let's go ahead and try to place a market order. So we'll see here it happened immediately. We filled a $1 USDC order of Bitcoin at this price and it was a market order and it went through right away. And once we run that function, we'll see that there's two things that are actually happening. The first thing is that it's trying to print the information from all of our accounts. And then the second thing that's happening is it's placing the market buy. So if you just wanted to place a market buy, you could actually get rid of this accounts information. And then hopefully if you ran it again, it would be printing, you know, less stuff for you here. So let's go ahead and click on play. And so now it's giving us success true and showing us that we placed another buy order for 10 US dollars. It looks like I was able to find a bit of a bug here with just the out of the box implementation of what they're doing on this client order ID. These client order IDs need to be unique. So so I changed this quote size to 10 to see if I could get a $10 Bitcoin order to go through. And you'll see here that I did. But if I play this again, it's not going to create another order. And it's because this client order ID is already a unique string that has been used for my order IDs, I guess in this session, or I'm not sure you know, how often that needs to get updated. But you'll see over here, it's not going to create another $10 USD order. But if I go ahead and I change this to client order ID three, and then I go ahead and play again, you'll see that immediately that next $10 USDC order goes through and I've bought 10 more dollars of Bitcoin. So this is a pretty easy to work around problem. If you import a UUID or some other sort of unique identifier, you can go ahead and implement that here for yourself. 
It's something that Coinbase, I think, will probably easily fix, maybe even by the time that you're watching this video. But just do be aware that if you are trying to create multiple orders like that and it's not going through, you might need to update your client order ID. Coming back here to the README, they also give you documentation for how to make a generic REST call if you want to get very specific with the data that you're passing into these orders. And then finally down here, they do have a WebSocket API, which is going to be using the exact same authentication that we did previously in that last step of the video for the REST API, exact same API key, exact same API secret, or if you want to use that JSON key file or the environment variables that they described up above, you can use those as well. And this WebSocket API is going to be valuable for you if you're trying to trigger your Coinbase API implementation off of some other third party app that you have developed or that you're trying to integrate with. For most of the people that are watching the content that I'm putting out on this channel, we're probably not going to use this anytime soon, but I might come up with some reason that we might want to use this at some point in the future. If I do, I'll probably integrate it natively into the wrapper that I'm building. And then again, down here, if you're trying to write your own custom authentication, they give you some code to allow you to do that. It looks like it's using this JWT generator code. I don't think it's gonna be super relevant to the audience on this channel. But if you guys do want to see anything with the authentication or with this WebSocket API, if you guys are interested in me going through setting any of that up beyond what's just here in the readme, let me know down in the comments and over on Discord and I'll go ahead and make a video. Finally, you can use their public REST endpoints without creating an API key, but it was so easy for us to create an API key in this video that I think you might as well just create the API key and get access to everything. And then finally down here, they have an invite link to their Discord. If you do want to join that Discord or you want to join my Discord to talk through and meet other developers who are developing on the Coinbase API, definitely go ahead and use those links that I'll have down in the description. So hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. I'll leave all of this code down in the description. It's super basic code that's going to allow you to make market buys or limit buys of whatever cryptocurrency you want in whatever size you want using the actual official Coinbase Advanced Trade API. And then if you guys wait a few weeks or maybe a month, I've been pretty lazy recently and I have not been able to get the stuff that I have wanted to get done done. I will have hopefully finally integrated this official SDK that Coinbase has released into my Python wrapper that I have released on the channel previously. Once we get that done, I'm probably not going to be talking about the official SDK anymore unless there are some new big releases to it or updates to it because those updates are going to automatically hopefully get included into my Python wrapper and then we'll just use my Python wrapper here on the channel. That's going to let us do stuff like access the fear and greed index, access other trading indicators that we've covered here on the channel, like the ones put out by Alpha Squared. If you don't know what Alpha Squared is, I'll have a link up in the cards and down in the description to videos that I've done in the past explaining the product or just anything else that we want to build here. If there's enough demand on the channel and we can get enough developers together, maybe we could build a Telegram bot or like a Twitter Coinbase bot or something weird like that. Let me know down in the description if you think any of that's interesting and definitely go join the discords if you want to meet more like-minded developers. That's it for today, guys. I love you all. See you hopefully next week. I've been pretty bad at uploading videos regularly, but I'm trying to get back into swing of things. See you later.